Introduction Humanity is experiencing a profound transformation of consciousness from the third and fourth dimensional belief in separation through time and space and limitation, the old energy, to the fifth dimensional state of the now moment, the new energy where oneness, liberation or freedom, abundance, joy, love, peace and beauty become an actual living experience. This experience or state of consciousness has been sought after for thousands of years by dedicated seekers, usually cloistered away in monasteries, ashrams, or convent-type environments. Now in this new energy, everyone, whether they're aware of it or not, are being exposed to the higher and higher frequencies of light that are literally tearing apart their concept of reality. There's no longer a choice in this. The new energy has arrived. What is full must be empty for truth to enter. Today there are many concepts or so-called paths to truth, all until now taking many years or lifetimes to complete and are followed by millions of truth seekers. Most place freedom out in the future, which for the separated consciousness is desirable since becoming empty is another word for death. Yikes! Not of the body, but of the separated identity or false self, and this prospect is terrifying to the false self. So for it, anything that delays this is encouraged. For the brave ones who choose freedom now, no matter what, self-discovery or self-inquiry is the most direct route and is always a now-moment experience that perfectly harmonizes with the fifth-dimensional energies now bathing the planet and humanity. It declares quite simply that you and God are one. The same consciousness, that you are God. Self-discovery is associated with satsang, which together mean standing in the fire of who you are not. It's far simpler to discover who you are by revealing who you are not than trying to live up to some definition of who you are, which is always a flawed fabrication of the mind. Satsang is a wake-up call, and you gave it to yourself before you came into this life to help bring you quickly back to the awareness of who you really are. I will not be preaching to the choir, or anyone for that matter. I'm not a teacher. I am you, pointing at who you are not. The choir means those that are at least awake mentally and know about the possibility of freedom. They are, in most cases, already involved in some practice or spiritual modality, and often have such a vested interest in it that they resist a shift into the simplicity of freedom now. I speak to those who are open to freedom now, and in many cases, that means the huge portion of humanity that is just now stepping into the fire of truth. You'll know if you're one of these billions of souls who have, until recently, placed their shaky trust in the world out there, but can no longer go there. And on some level, you've said, there must be a better way. I have come to a place where nothing makes sense without you, where distractions can no longer pull me away from your gaze where the world around me is nothing more than a fading dream, and the masks that I've worn fall away no matter how hard I try to wear their lies. I have come to the place where my heart aches to turn away from you for even a moment. I'm homesick, and nothing can fill my emptiness but you. Only the eternal embrace of the love you are, reminding me of the love I am, can restore me to myself. John McIntosh Chapter 1. You are God. The collective consciousness of humanity has dwelled in a state of separation for countless thousands of years. This is the result of what some refer to as the fall of man, which in truth means the fall of the conscious awareness of oneness, of who you really are. In this separated conscious state, it has seemed possible and reasonable to state the truth, as these two well-known scriptural quotes have done. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, Deuteronomy 6.4, and there is only one God, the Vedas, and yet still maintain and live life as if there is me, my own individual identity, and there is everything else, meaning other people, animals, birds, fish, insects, flowers, vegetation, forests, mountains, oceans and rivers, planets, stars, solar systems, galaxies, and at least one universe, 
and there is God. The belief that there is one God somewhere out there, outside the individual self, is an obvious contradiction of the belief itself. One is one, not one plus countless other things. This belief has often been justified by defining God as a spiritual being and everything else as physical manifestations containing the spark of God created by, but outside God's oneness. And yet, everything is spiritual. Even science says in simple terms through quantum mechanics that everything is an invisible wave, spiritual, until attention is given to it, at which moment the wave becomes a particle or a physical manifestation, yet still spiritual since it is within and created out of the wave. Spirit taking form out of as well as within itself. Everything that exists comes out of nothingness, or no thing, emptiness, and becomes something through conscious attention, from the tiniest particle to the vast universe. However, the spiritual nature of nothingness is still at the core of the manifestation, which is always temporary, from a soap bubble to a star system, which eventually return to their original nothingness or empty spiritual state. This means that pure conscious awareness untainted by beliefs, who has been given the name God and numberless other versions of this concept by the separated false self, created everything out of itself, and if out of itself, within itself, since there's no outside one, which can have no boundaries if it is one. The unbroken line that forms a circle is just a conceptual image to outpicture oneness which is boundless. From this understanding it must be seen that if everything is a physically manifested extension of pure conscious awareness, then that which animates these creations must also be this pure conscious awareness, or one God. This means that the manifestation is made of, has within it, and is the one God. Most spiritual teachings speak of God in you, but do not refer to God as you, which is a huge difference and is an attempt to confirm that we are not the one God. This teaching has allowed almost every traditional spiritual belief system to maintain an iron grip hold over its followers as an intermediary between the one God and them, enacting any rule, practice, discipline, or consequence it chooses on those who fail to comply with their definition of truth, including the fantasy of heaven and hell. If God is love, which is an aspect of its pure extensions of itself, then where could anything less than love exist within itself, such as anger, judgment, and cruelty? How could God be so foolish as to damn parts of itself to an existence, eternal by some definitions, less than perfect, perfect peace, beauty, abundance, and freedom, which are also aspects of its infinite being? Despite the obvious insanity of this, the vast majority of humanity believes and fears this to some degree. So great has the conditioning been of the horrendous possibilities that it suggests. From the understanding of all being one as God, it becomes easy to also recognize that the only difference between all creations, other than appearance, is the level of awareness each of these creations has of itself, as the one God or pure conscious awareness. Each is inherently an equal extension of this one God, but lacks, to some extent, the awareness of who it really is. From this clear understanding, it becomes possible to say, without the blasphemous association that the separated false self has about such statements, that everything manifested is this pure conscious awareness or one God. Therefore, to state that you are God is a simple truth. To say, I am that I am, given to Moses on Mount Sinai as the name of God, is a simple way of declaring who you and me and everything else, all that is, is the one God. And a quote by Ramana Maharashi, God dwells in you as you, and you don't have to do anything to be God realized or self-realized. It's already your true and natural state. Just drop all seeking turn your attention inward, and sacrifice your mind to the one self radiating in the heart of your very being. For this to be your own presently lived experience, self-inquiry is the one direct and immediate way. 
it makes perfect sense that when anyone becomes aware of this truth, that there comes upon that one an expanded consciousness as well. Since pure conscious awareness, or God, created all that is, out of and within itself, knowing who you are must also remind you of the power and wisdom you have always possessed and now possess to do such things. This awareness may then further be extended into what may be called the divine, sovereign, independent you aspect of the one God to create or choose, as I'll explain later, whatever experiences they desire. In other words, God-like abilities. This is the awareness that is dawning upon humanity now in the new energy, the first baby steps of the prophesied golden age. And a quote by Adashanti, The reason that you struggle is in order to maintain a sense of separate self, a self which is ultimately nothing more than a defense mechanism against the revelation that no separate self actually exists.